this is David. In the past we've talked about creating bots using the Microsoft Bot Framework, but this time we're going to create a bot using something called Q&A Maker. And Q&A Maker is an easy way of creating a bot that just does a bunch of questions and answers. I can get started at this at qnamaker.ai and click over here on um, my knowledge bases. I currently don't have any knowledge bases at all, so I'm going to say create a knowledge base. And step one of creating a knowledge base is to create a service inside of Azure. So you will you will need an Azure account for this. If I click this button right here, it'll take me to the Azure portal. It's cached my credentials, but it might ask you to log in. And from here, I fill out this blade right here. I can also do the same thing if I happen to just go to portal.azure.com. Then I can select create a resource and either search for it right here with QNA maker like that, or I can say create a resource and instead find it underneath um, AI and machine learning. It's not listed by default here, it's actually under cognitive services. So I can find it here in cognitive services. There it is right there, QNA maker. So that's another way of doing it. But clicking this button create is brings me to that exact same blade that I got from here. So I'll do that. I'll see. I'm going to call this. I'll give it a name. I'll talk, call it DG Test QA. If you've been watching these videos, you know I name everything. All my demos start with DG Test. This is just a name that allows me to find it inside the portal. Um, I select my subscription. The pricing tier, there's a free one and the cheap one. You can see the difference between these by just clicking that link right there. It'll describe them. I'm cheap. I'll just take the free one right here instead of the $10 a month one. Uh, where do I want to place this? West US is fine. I'll create a brand new resource group for this. It's going to create a few things. I want them all in the same resource group so that I can, uh, in this case, just so I can clean them up really quickly. I'll call it DG Test Q A R G for resource group. Um, I'll add uh, the pricing tier. The cheapest one is fine search locations, all this, this is fine. This is another name, and this actually, this name is how it's uh, the, the web service will be addressed. It's going to create a web service that'll be HTTPS colon whack whack DG test QA, or whatever I type in here, dot Azure websites dot net. So this must be unique, because it'll be a public facing URL. Put a location for that. I probably should put all these in the same region here. Why don't I stick this in East US, if it lets me. It actually doesn't allow that in this region, so I'll select West US, that's fine, and I'll click on Create. It'll go out and validate everything that I'm doing here. It takes probably two minutes or so, so I'm going to pause the video right now and come back when this thing is done creating, and then I'll have a link right here. Okay, we're done. That took a little over a minute. But when I'm done here, I can go to resource, and it opened it up here, and this is the resource that I just created, this cognitive service for Azure, uh, the, the Q&A maker. You could also go into all resources and search for it there as well if you want to. The important thing, I could change some things in here, but really I only created this because this button right here told me to. I need to do that as step one. So I've got my service here, and now I want to select it right here. You may need to refresh this page to make sure it'll show up in here. Um, because this was pre-populated, and I want to specify this directory and this subscription. You'll probably only have one of those, but within that, here is the Q&A service that I just created in the Azure portal. I want to give it a name. I'll call this my DG test QAKB. How about that? And then I want to populate it with a bunch of questions and answers. And there are a few ways that I can do that really quickly. I can select a URL that contains some questions and answers. I can add a file. I want a tab delimited file right here. I can also add some chit chat, I can, which is uh, just a bunch of things that'll answer some common questions that I want to right here. Now I happen to have a document that has a lot of these questions and answers. It's over here in Q&A Maker FAQs. It's actually part of Q&A Maker. So you can see things like, why is my URL? There's a question. Here's the answer. And how large a database can I create? There's the answer. A whole bunch of questions and answers for me here. I can just use this. It'll understand this. So what I'll do is I'll use this URL. I'll paste it right into that URL. 
and I'll use that. And I can add multiple URLs if I want to. I can also add files. It'll prompt me to select a file, but I'm not going to do that right now. I will sp add a chit chat to that as well, and I could use professional or friendly or funny. Uh, I'll even do professional. I'm a, I'm a professional guy, right? And then create my knowledge base. And this says it only takes a minute. It actually takes less than a minute. This goes really quickly. What's going to happen is it's going to create a knowledge base for me with a bunch of questions and a bunch of answers, many of which are from this list of questions and answers. There's a whole bunch of them in here. Um, and then also, there's some questions and answers stored in this chit chat. You know, if you say things like, are you a boy or a girl? It'll say, uh, you know, I'm, uh, th that doesn't really apply to me or something like that. Uh, and here we go, just a little bit later. So here you can see it. So here, I accidentally deleted a part of my Q&A maker. What should I do? That was actually one of the questions right here. And the answer, all deletes are permanent, blah, blah, blah. That's the answer. If you don't like that, you can actually go in here and change these if you want to. Uh, and as I go through this, you'll see there are many, many questions in here. And then down here, these are the ones that came from the chit chat. So if I ask you any one of these comments, what's your age? Are you young? When were you were born? The answer will be age doesn't really apply to me in here. So I have all this data set up in here. I can add to it. If I want to add, go to the end, I can add more questions to this. Um, I can delete questions if I want, but I can add more right here. But I'm good with this. I can test it out. How old, old are you? Any one of those. Enter, and I get back. Age doesn't really apply to me. It's, it's figured this thing out here. Now I need to, to train it. This is machine learning, so it'll take all those questions that I just loaded, including any other ones that I've added to it, and it'll create a model based on that, a machine learning model that it can use. And once that's done, which should take really less than a minute here, then we'll be able to go with this. Close that, and we are ready to go. If later I want to change anything, here under settings, I can change some of these things, like the name of it, uh, the knowledge base I'm coming from. I can also export this, which allow me to cr export it as a TSV file, as a tab separated file. It takes a bit to, to, uh, of time to do that, so I won't do that now. Ultimately, what I really want to do is I want to publish it, and I'll say click yes publish right here and then in less than a minute what will happen is it will be published to Azure and Azure will assign that URL in this case what do I call it dgtestqa.azurewebsites.net and you can see it in here https colon at whack whack dgtestqa.azurewebsites.net slash QA maker and then I can ask, access it with uh, this header information and this and this this will be in the body and I can do this through postman which is what it's showing here I can if I have curl I can execute a curl statement like this I can do it through JavaScript or C sharp or Ruby or Python anything any language or platform or operating system that can send an HTTP post request can handle this right here so let's try it using curl. Here's the curl statement. I'll just copy this right here. And I happen to have curl installed on here. If you don't, you can do this quick enter. That search allows you to bring this out here. And this all is, I want to do a post to that URL right there. Here's my header information with the key and the content type. Okay, it's JSON. And then the question, it's sort of leaving me to fill that in. It should be something like are you old enter and I'll get some JSON back uh, and the answer right here age doesn't really apply to me I got the same thing right here I could do the same thing using postman and in this case I'll come back to postman I want to send it to a post to this URL HTS colon whack whack DG test QA Azure websites.net slash QA maker slash knowledge base slash this whole long GUID here slash generate answer. So that whole thing there is going to be important. Let me copy this 
and paste it into here, followed by slash that. Right there, it is a post, and then I need some information in the headers. So one header will be authorization. And the authorization will be endpoint key, followed by that long GUID right there. Always want to make sure you don't have any extra carriage returns or spaces at the beginning or end when you do something like this. And the other one is content type is application slash JSON. Right there, and then in the body of my request, a question. How old are you? And this will send exactly the same request that I did with curl, and I should get a response back that's a 200, meaning everything was okay. And in the JSON that comes back, what I'm really interested for is this answer right here. There's a score that says it figured out how to match this. It exactly matched this with something in here. So right now, I've shown you how to use Microsoft's QNA Maker to create a service and publish that as a web service so that then you can use that as a bot to do simple questions and answers. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.